Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. I believe today is March the 7th, 2019. Greetings from lovely Seattle. Let's talk boxing just quickly. The Christina Hammer, Claressa Shields fight took an interesting twist the other day on Twitter when Hammer talked about how Shields did not meet the weight requirement for one of these sanctioning bodies. You know, now they actually weigh you between fights. They have certain recommendations. They want to make sure that none of the fighters are weight drained. Now, for this fight, an Ali type, right, Hammer, against a Joe Fraser collapsed the pocket front foot heavy type in Shields, both are going to have to be at their best physically, right? At their best. Now understand, your fitness is really a function of your weight in a sport where both of these women are going to have to make weight, right? They're going to have to drain themselves down to the middle weight limit for the weigh-in. So if you're a Claressa Shields supporter, right, just understand, at least according to Hammer, I haven't seen it anywhere else, Shields is having weight problems. That's a red flag. Let's talk about another upset that I believe is going to happen, right? I like Danny Jacobs over Canelo, but I have to tell you I was shaken to learn that when the sanctioning bodies weighed them, they're supposed to be fighting at 160. Canelo came in at 168, right? While I'm not thrilled about that, that's not that bad. Danny Jacobs, by contrast, was up in the 170s, mid-170s. I believe he weighed 176 or something like that at this weigh-in. Now, Jacobs is tall for the middleweight division. A lot of these weight classes are really a sham. But understand, I didn't like that in the slightest. Canelo, who collapsed the pocket on Golovkin in the rematch, who collapsed the pocket on Rocky Fielding in his fight after fighting Golovkin, has to think that Danny Jacobs, who barely, and I mean barely, made it to the end of his fight against Golovkin, right? Jacobs is physically drained. In my opinion, Canelo has to be thinking that if he raises room temperature long enough, Jacobs is going to wilt like a wilted flower, right? Now, I know, I know. These guys have nutritionists. These guys know how to lose weight the right way we'll hear and stuff like that. But then you'll run into situations time and time again. Sean Porter's last fight, for example, where a fighter thinks he has the formula down to lose. In Jacobs's case, it's going to be about, what, a dozen and a half pounds, close to it, right? The fighter says, oh, it's okay. This is all water weight. You know, I'll wear the vinyl suit. I'll hit the sauna. I'll do what I need to lose weight. I'm just telling you that that's a recipe for disaster. You need to keep an eye on the Danny Jacobs situation. I still think he beats Canelo. But let's just say I'll be watching his weight. Let me say this too. In an earlier fight, Kel Brook against Golovkin. You might recall at one of these weigh-ins, Kel Brook weighed a lot. Right? We were to think that Kel Brook was a natural middleweight. Well, I'll just say in his fight against Golovkin, Kel Brook got winded in the middle of that fight, didn't he? Kel Brook's corner threw in the towel in a fight where Kel Brook had the faster feet and had the faster hands than Golovkin, right? We remember the fight as Kel Brook drawing a line in the sand and actually doing well, hanging with Golovkin early in that fight. But just remember how the fight ends. It doesn't make it to the later rounds. Right? Kel Brook's corner throws in the towel. Let me say this too about boxing, betting, Danny Jacobs. Understand, if a fighter enters the ring, 
and has had problems making weight. Right? Has had to drain himself and might feel, might know that he doesn't have his usual stamina. Understand that that might actually change his strategy. Right? The fighter might come out and might decide, okay, I'm going to go for a knockout because I'm questioning my own stamina in rounds 10, 11, and 12. The news you get is filtered. Right? Um, fighters, when they give interviews, they want to praise people in their corner. They want to praise themselves. You'll often hear fighters say, you know what, I've had a great camp. I'm ready for this fight. You know, everyone's been great to me. My sparring partners have pushed me. My corner has kept me on even keel. Um, I feel fine. Right? Fighters rarely will say, you know, I've had a lousy camp. My weight, it's been a problem. I'm in my 30s now. The pounds just don't drop off. I hopped on the scale two days ago and I was shocked that I was three pounds more than I thought I would be. And burning those three pounds is going to be very difficult. Right? So my point is simply this. Don't rely on fighter interviews. What you need to do is you need to actually hear stories like Clarissa Shields. Not meeting a sanctioning body weight guideline while her taller opponent did. You need to focus on stories like Danny Jacobs right now outweighing Canelo by something like eight pounds. Right? I think the public thinks these guys walk around between fights at 160. Betters, insiders, the athletes themselves know that that's a fallacy for most, right? Floyd Mayweather did walk around, around welterweight between fights. It's one of the reasons why he was a great fighter, why he had stamina. But understand, in this sport, right, where literally, I believe Sean Porter had to cut off some of his hair to make weight. Think about that. That's how low margin making weight is. Just to understand in this sport, you're only getting half of the facts when the fighters and the people in their corner give interviews, they're giving you the Disneyland PC version of events, right? Danny Jacobs between now and I believe it's just like a month from now is going to have to drop more than a dozen pounds, right? Clarissa Shields right now People are going to say, oh, these sanctioning bodies and their guidelines, right? She's either going to be physically fit to collapse the pocket on Christina Hammer, and keep in mind that requires that she get by Hammer's jab, right? She's going to have to be physically fit enough to deal with Hammer's superior foot speed, or she's not going to be. Understand the burden's on her. If she doesn't collapse the pocket, she's going to get battered by a jab, right? Let's just say right now, according to the sanctioning body guidelines, she is not quite on schedule. That fight takes place next week. That's how I see it. I'm going to get back to Seattle. I see the sun's out. And wow, that's a rarity. <laughs> up here just visiting but let's just say I haven't seen the sun as much as I'd like uh, I'm going to get back to the sun I'm going to get back to the city let me thank you for indulging me here pay attention to the mid fight weights they matter there is a possibility that Danny Jacobs shows up looks thinner than you'd want him to look for the weigh in makes weight is in against Canelo a smaller man and Jacobs decides, you know what, especially if Canelo comes out and roughs him up a little bit early, Jacobs might then decide, okay, well, I need to draw a line in the sand here. Right? The question is, how does it end? With his hand being raised and Canelo counted out? Or like it ended for Cal Brook against Golovkin? That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.